Hi, my name is Devin Knight. I'm the training director here at Pragmatic Works. And today I want to tell you about the top five reasons that you should be excited about the new Power BI composite model features. There's a lot of cool things that came with one of the latest updates of Power BI, composite models being one feature that's now available in preview. And I really want to kind of highlight some of those features and tell you why you should be excited about it. The first reason why you should be excited about Power BI composite models is the fact that you can now have mixed storage modes. Meaning basically that previously, one of the big deficiencies of Power BI is if you wanted to combine two different types of sources, say for example, one that was imported into your data model, and then another one that used direct query, that wasn't possible. You couldn't have both a direct query and imported source in the same model. You actually couldn't even have two different direct query sources in the same model. That's been changed, that's been fixed. And now you have the ability using the composite model features to be able to have a mixed storage mode inside of Power BI. So rather than talking about it too much, let's actually take a look at what this is like. Let's hop into a quick demonstration here. Now in the demonstration I'm showing you here, I'm actually connected to a data source that is direct query related. And you can see each of the tables that I'm referring to here are using direct query. I'm hovering above each one of these here. You can see the properties of them, where they came from and what the storage mode is. And you can also see the storage mode if you look in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see that the storage mode is set to direct query. And what we can do now, what we have capable of, what, what's possible now is that we can actually import from another type of source Either, either an additional direct query source, or we can import a new data source into the model, not direct query, but actually imported. So in our scenario here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the Get Data section and select Excel to bring in an Excel file this time. And I'm gonna connect it to the file that I have right here. This is a file that has in it some temperature data. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the temperature data and hit open to bring this into our model. I'll select the spreadsheet that we're going to use for this and hit load to bring this now into our data model. And it's going to import that data into the same model as our direct query output. And I can rename this table if I wanted to. I can right click or double click and rename this to something like temperature. So I can use it later. Now, the other benefit here is you can actually see that you can go to the data view, which is not possible with the direct query source. If you go to the data view, you'll see that most of the tables are not available in the data view. However, the temperature table that we just imported is because that was an imported table. So the data view is now made possible to use again, but only on those sources that are imported. So you'll also notice here, if we look in the field list, that the temperature table is now set to imported here as well. So you have the ability to see that inside the properties of each table. The next feature that I'm really excited about is this feature called uh, really storage flexibility, I guess is the best way to say it. And what this is referring to is a new storage mode called dual. And basically what dual allows you to do is to take a direct query source that you have or direct query table and tell it that you want this one specific table from that direct query source to be imported. Now what would normally happen whenever you go to select a source and a table from a source Let's say, for example, I have a data source that I'm pulling five tables from, and all of them are set to direct query. If you wanted to flip one table from direct query to imported, you actually had to uh, change that for all the tables. But what's now been added is a little bit more flexibility where you can actually now tell it that you want to set one of those tables to a dual capability or a dual storage mode, which means that that one direct query data source can, all, can have both tables that are imported and tables that have been set to direct query and have a live connection back to the data source. So a really cool capability. Let's go ahead and show you how this one works. It's easy to enable. All right, so in this example, we're going to be changing the storage mode of one of our direct query tables. So if you were to look at all the tables that we have on our list, you see, for example, we have a dim date, dim product, dim sales territory. And you know, my date dimension, my dim date table really doesn't change that much. So I don't necessarily need to be needed to be set to direct query. Again, direct query, query would allow me to pull in a live version of the data from the data source when really my date dimension isn't changing very frequently at all. So what I'd like to do instead is change just that one table to be set to import. Now, the way you can do that is you can right click on the table here in the field list, go down to the properties and you'll see the properties menu launch where you can actually set the settings or change the settings of that storage mode. And so you'll see the storage mode set right here where you can change it between direct query, imported, and also an option called dual. So let's talk about the first two options. Now import is the default option with inside of Power BI. Anytime you connect to data, by default, it's going to import and it's going to actually bring your data into a Power BI data model. 
which is great because you know it'll actually give some increased performance for some data sources, but the downside is you're gonna have some latency depending on when you set the data to be refreshed. Direct Query, on the other hand, does not require a refresh because it's always pointing to the live version of the data. And then you might have some tables with inside of a Direct Query source that you actually want to be imported. And so you have a couple options. You could say that I want to change dim date to import, but what will happen if I select import here is all of the tables that came from that data source will immediately change to import. What Dual allows me to do is have some tables from a data source be set to direct query and other tables be imported. So the tables that you want to be imported into your data model, because say for example, they don't change very frequently, I can make them into Dual. So in my case, my dim date table doesn't change very often. So I'm gonna set that one to Dual. And what that will do is it's actually gonna import this data and make it part of a refresh plan whenever I go to set up my data refresh. So if I hit OK, now dim date was just imported and I can see the storage mode option on it is set to dual. And while my other tables are still set to direct query. So again, the point there is what dual allows me to do is actually have kind of a hybrid connection where that same connection to my database can be used both for direct query and for import. So if you wanna just change one individual table, you would use the dual option. All right, let's talk about the next feature. The next feature that I'm really excited about is the ability to do many-to-many -many relationships with composite models. Now, many-to-many -many relationships, there's certainly ways that you can navigate through doing them in Power BI now, but there's some new capabilities built in whenever you need to create relationships between two different tables. I see this most often useful whenever folks that are very new to Power BI start to work with it. Oftentimes, people don't realize with Power BI that your relationships that you define between two tables one of those two tables needs to have a unique identifier, a column that is, has a value that is unique throughout that table and does not get duplicated at all. That's what normally you would interact with whenever you interact with Power BI is one of your tables that are part of your relationship needs to have some kind of unique identifier. Well, in some cases, that may not be possible. You might have in some cases where you know the two tables that you're relating to are really more complex than that. And uh, you need some way to be able to relate them even though neither table actually has a unique identifier. And in this case, you may require this many-to-many -many relationship that we're talking about. Now, I'd say this is probably a pretty rare circumstance and oftentimes you might get yourself in a little bit of trouble if you use this many-to-many -many relationship when it's not necessary. Uh, in some cases, this can actually cover up some data integrity problems. In fact, it'll cover them up but also create more. So you wanna be very certain before you actually use this many-to-many -many relationship type that we're gonna look at. Basically, the idea here again is that we have two tables that we wanna to relate to each other, neither have a unique identifier, but they do relate on this one column. So what we can do with this new composite model feature and many-to-many -many relationships is we can define a relationship between those two tables that's based on a column even though there's no unique identifier. So let's take a quick look at how this works. All right, so in this example, I'm gonna go ahead and close out our field properties, and I'm gonna go over to the relationship view. And in the relationship view, you can see we have these two tables, my fact internet sales table in the middle, and my temperature table on the right. And I have really a, a, a column that is my uh, way to relate them, which is the, based on the region. I don't have any other columns that are really uh, able to relate between the two of them. And region is not unique in temperature, and region is not unique in my sales table. Previously, if I tried to create a relationship between those two tables, it would actually give you an error telling you that you can't do that, and one of the tables must have a unique identifier. But now, with the new composite model feature, you can drag region on top of region for it to be able to define a many-to-many -many relationship. Now, for those of you that have actually worked with modeling and done a lot of data modeling in the past, you probably realize that there's been other ways to solve this in the past. Oftentimes, you build a bridge table between the two tables here to be able to manage that relationship. But in this case, Power BI is able to manage this for us. And you can actually see all of our other tables use a one-to-many relationship, whereas this new relationship that we created is a many-to-many. So there's multiple regions into the temperature table. There's not a unique one. And there's multiple regions in my fact table. And yet now when we define that relationship, we can actually go back over to our report view and we can start to build out some reports between those two different tables. And I can bring in something like the uh, temperature and maybe something like the sales amount from our sales table, and it would be able to work. There we go. So just like that, we're able to now see how much we've sold when it was cool versus warm versus cold versus hot. 
Now again, you do want to be very careful when using this feature. Don't overuse it. Use it just when you need it. Don't, don't try and use this to cover up data integrity problems. There really is uh, specific use cases on when you might use this feature. All right, let's look at the next feature we want to talk about. The next reason you should be really excited about the Power BI Composite model features really isn't a new feature at all. It really has more to do with the fact that Power BI and the Power BI team is listening to you. Your voice actually matters when it comes to this product. I encourage you to go look at the ideas forum to be able to actually plug in it's a, in user voice the kind of ideas that you have because ideas like this came from user voice and the ideas forum where you can actually post in ideas. And things that have been posted in that ideas forum are actually implemented in the tool itself. So please, please, any ideas you have about the product, make sure you enter those into the ideas page in the user voice forum because those ideas get implemented in the product on a regular basis and you'll see those very quickly. Finally, the last reason that you should be excited about these new features, the new Power BI composite model, is because it just continues to show the never-ending innovation with the Microsoft team and Power BI team more specifically. You're seeing changes happen with the Power BI desktop, at least monthly, and then the Power BI service sometimes as often as weekly. And those changes are really innovative inside of what you can do in Power BI. So the innovation that happens within the Power BI team is so rapid and you're seeing it actually occur here. They're giving you insight into preview features. They're then allowing you to test them and see and, and give them telemetry data on what's working, what's not working. And it's really a big bonus, not only for you to be able to see what's coming, but also for them to see how things are working. Is this, is this method working well? Do we need to change it? You're actually seeing a lot of that innovation take place. Just, just think about this. Where was Power BI a year ago? And where is it today? There's been so many changes in the product just in one year. We're now three years into the product and it's vastly different from where it started. And it's really, really taking its competition by the horns, right? It's, it's kind of uh, uh, really changed the way the competition in these types of products work and that no other product is innovating like the Power BI team is. So that's it for today. Real quick, wanted to show you and give you some ideas of what my top five reasons are why that you should be excited about the Power BI posit models. Hope you enjoyed this and look forward to some other great videos from me. Thanks.